Live with Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips, plus Tom Brokaw, Katie Curry, and Maria Shriver. From Studio 3B in Rockefeller Center, here is Jane Pauley. Good evening. Tracy, California, just outside Sacramento. Seven million burning tires triggered a state of emergency in August, and the fire is still not out. This happens all the time because millions and millions of tires are piling up around the country. Getting rid of them isn't as easy as you might think, but it can be done. Good old-fashioned American ingenuity has not only come up with a solution, but one that might even save money. But some say good old-fashioned American politics is standing in the way, and you pay the bill. Here's Keith Morrison. Ever wonder about tires? What happens to them when they get old and bald? You take them off at the local service station, you forget about them. And every year, 250 million old tires, one for every living, breathing American, are thrown away. And where do most of them end up? In a place like this, in a tire pile. This tire dump in Smithfield, Rhode Island is said to be the second largest in the United States. Tires have been piling up here for 20 years. They now cover 14 acres of land. Authorities estimate there are at least 10 million tires in this pile alone. That's right, 10 million. And there are many such piles around America. Experts say they constitute far more than an eyesore by the side of the road. They are our environmental nightmare. All across the country, dozens and dozens of tire piles have caught fire. And because a single tire contains at least a gallon of oil, these fires burn incredibly hot and are almost impossible to put out. This fire in Pennsylvania raged for four months before it finally burned itself out. This tire pile in Virginia caught fire and burned out of control for nine months. It causes massive amounts of particulate black smoke getting in the air runs off into streams and lakes and rivers, causing more pollution. Doug Howell is an environmental attorney. He says tire piles may be hidden, but they pose a very real threat. For hundreds, if not thousands of counties, it is the number one solid waste problem. Howell says two to three billion tires are piled up around the country in rubber mountains like this one in Sycamore, Ohio. With up to 80 million tires, it's considered the country's biggest. Why are tires so hard to get rid of? Well, for one thing, the steel belts that make them work better actually prevent recycling. You can't retread steel belted tires. You can't bury whole tires in landfills. Their built in air pockets help them work their way right back up to the surface. One solution that seemed promising is burning tires for fuel. But even though the furnaces apparently burn clean, people are still worried about the emissions and don't want them nearby. Tire furnaces are also prohibitively expensive, costing tens of millions of dollars to build, so only a handful have been built around the country. Even the owner of that Rhode Island tire dump, Billy Davis, acknowledges that when it comes to environmental threats, waste tires are a special stubborn breed. This ain't a Bill Davis problem. This is a United States problem. It's all over the country. But just outside Winslow, Arizona, could officials have come across an inspired solution to the tire pile problem? They say it's literally where the rubber meets the road. Here's how it works. Scrap tires are brought to this special plant near Phoenix. They're shredded into strips and the steel belts are removed by magnets. The strips are then ground into bits the size of sand grains, a material that's called crumb rubber. A computer mixes the crumb rubber in just the right proportion with the traditional asphalt mix of crushed stone, oil, and sand. And voila, a super durable rubber asphalt. It looks just like any other highway, but engineers here say the road created is anything but conventional. George Way is an engineer with the Arizona Department of Transportation. He showed us this test road. On one side, a stretch of conventional asphalt four inches thick, on the other, just two inches of rubberized asphalt. The difference was striking. Take a look at the rubberized asphalt. Even after seven years of wear and tear, it's still nearly as good as new. Uh, virtually no cracking at all. 
in this section. And that's been down seven years. Oh, golly, it's amazing. That it? is. It's darn amazing. It's pretty impressive. As for the other stretch of road with four inches of regular asphalt, the constant stream of traffic has taken a heavy toll. That section actually started to crack up the first year and has gotten progressively worse every year. Way says not only does crumb rubber make the road stronger, it still looks like asphalt. It also makes it smoother and quieter. And though the rubber makes costs more, Way says because you only have to use half as much material and the road lasts at least twice as long, in the end, it's cheaper. We've built over 1,200 miles of this pavement in Arizona in the last five years and had very good results, very, very good results.